Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Brian Moriarty, and I am the chairman of the Hatfield Select Board. And along with my colleagues, Ed Jaworski and Diana Zinal, we would like to thank all of you for joining us here at Hatfield Memorial Town Hall. As we receive exciting news regarding our MassWorks grant application for our planned Route 5 water and sewer improvements. I'd especially like to welcome our invited guests, Mike Keneally, Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, Senator Joe Comerford, Representative Lindsay Sabadosa, um, Erica Gies and Frank Stiebel, both from Stiebel Eltron, one of our business partners here in town. And I'd like to recognize Juan Vega, who's in the audience, uh, Undersecretary for CPRO. The submission of our grant application to the State Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development was truly a team effort. Locally, that team consisted of the Board of Selectmen, DPW Director Phil Genovese, Building Inspector Kyle Scott, Town Administrator Marlene Mishansky, Consulting Engineer Michael Ohl, and Eric Aguiz and Frank Stiebel from Stiebel Eltron. And of course, our local delegation to the State House, Senator Comerford, Rep. Sabadosa, and Western Mass Economic Development President Rick Sullivan, who was unable to be here today. Other local business partners were also in strong support of this grant application, as it will allow many to grow and expand their existing businesses, as well as explore new business ventures along the Route 5 corridor. So, what does the awarding of this grant mean for Hatfield? Hatfield, as we all know, is a small rural town that strives to preserve our rural and agricultural character while promoting sustainable economic development. The Route 5 corridor, West Street, from Northampton to Waitley is a key location that the town has identified for promoting further development due to its proximity to existing transportation infrastructure, such as Amtrak Vermonter Rail Line, Interstate I-91, and FRTA bus service from Northampton to Greenfield. With this MassWorks grant, Hatfield can now move forward with our plan to increase water and sewer capacity on Route 5 between Linseed Road and Rocks Road. This Route 5 project is part of the town's overall commitment to improve and replace aging infrastructure throughout town to provide clean and safe drinking water and expand sewer services for our residents and businesses. To date, the town has invested significantly in its water infrastructure in excess of two and a half million dollars. But today's award will help to support the proposed economic development by area businesses and new housing growth for residents. This is just a very brief explanation of the importance of Hatfield receiving this timely MassWorks grant. So thank you. Uh, right now I would ask uh, Secretary Mike Keneally to say a few words regarding this MassWorks grant. Mr. Secretary. Well, it's great to be with you today. Let me get the official business out of the way and officially announce a $2 million MassWorks infrastructure grant to extend sewer service on Route 5 uh, from Linseed Road to Rocks Road and water service for 1,200 feet along Route 5 south of Rocks Road. So that's the announcement. Congratulations to the town. I thought I might say a few words about the MassWorks program. So uh, in the last five years, the five years of the baker Polito administration, We've made $450 million of MassWorks grants to 220 projects in 140 communities. We've helped create uh, 14,000 housing units, millions of square feet of commercial space, thousands of jobs. It's a wonderful program. It's a large program. It's a flexible program. And therefore, it's probably the most powerful tool in the economic development toolbox. Now, the other point about MassWorks is it's competitive. And so this year, we're making 36 MassWorks grants. We had applications for 92. We're granting about $72 million. We had demand for $220 million or something. So these are hard projects to get. And uh, we got a great team led by Undersecretary Juan Vega, who helps lead the MassWorks effort. And they get all the applications come in, and we screen them. We have a big team that looks at them. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's really two criteria we look at. One is, is impact. We want to fund projects that will have a big impact on their communities. And the second is planning. You know, we like to fund things that are the product of some, some community planning, where the, where the town or city can tell us, look, this project's important to us for the following reasons. We, we have a strategy and an aspiration of where we want to go, and this project will help us. 
And I will say, one of the more fun parts of the days like this are coming out and hearing the stories behind the projects and all the work that took place locally to say, you know, here's where we're going, here are our goals, please help us, please help us fund this project. And so that really is, I think it really speaks well to the town and your vision and your planning uh, to get this grant to do this work. Um, I think it's a great project. I mean, the fact that we're making this, this basic investment in public infrastructure. And by the way, people always ask me, what does MassWorks fund? And, and it funds things like water and sewer and roadways and streets and lighting. What it really funds is that community vision. It helps these communities move forward. And it's a great project to put in this, uh, this basic infrastructure to help a, a great local company grow and other small businesses grow. And it's, uh, I think it's a wonderful way to move the community forward. Um, I do want to say um, that uh, it's great to have the senator and the rep here with us today because everything we do in the administration is in partnership with our colleagues in the legislature. And so these MassWorks funds that we get to go out and make investments with uh, are the product of economic development bills signed by the governor in 2016 and 2018 in great collaboration with our colleagues in the legislature to make these funds available. So it's a wonderful collaboration and partnership with our, uh, with Senator Comerford and Rep. Sabadosa and our other colleagues in the legislature. Um, I'd close by noting that the governor last, uh, last Friday signed the economic development bill for the second term of the Baker Polito administration. We spent a lot of time this year traveling all over the state getting impact on what our plan should be. And the plan has, has four main pillars, four things we're gonna focus on and five key principles that will inform the work. And one of the pillars is helping to ensure we have even more vibrant communities and making sure we keep making investments like this through MassWorks and other programs to make sure our communities can grow and, and, and support their aspirations. And on the principles, there's a number of things that are interesting, but I, I find three of them kind of connect today here in this work. One is infrastructure. You know, we, we need to keep creating more robust public infrastructure. Uh, the other is equitable opportunity. Uh, and the third I touch on is, is, is regional planning. So we need to think regionally. We need to keep developing better public infrastructure. And we need to make sure that everybody all across the state, every citizen, every community, every region, every company has what they need from us to make sure they can grow. So it's great to be with you all today. Congratulations to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. If I could now, I'd like to introduce Senator Joe Comerford to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here. I want to start by congratulating the town of Hatfield. This is an, a really enormous win, and it's based, as the secretary, I think, said so beautifully, on your grit, your planning, your vision, your tenacity uh, to see through these huge projects. Uh, and so just I'm, I'm so tremendously excited and very, very, very grateful that you've led Hatfield so beautifully um, for all of us. And then I just want to really just recognize Secretary Keneally and, of course, Mr. Undersecretary. Uh, these folks are everywhere in Western Massachusetts. Um, you know, uh, they, they were recently out in Deerfield for two tours. Uh, they're here today for four stops in the region, three in the Hampshire Franklin Worcester District alone. Uh, and I want to pull out something that uh, Secretary Keneally said so beautifully, and it's about equity, an equitable representation, equitable access to resources. I, you know, Mr. Secretary, you embody that in your actions. You embody that in the awards that are going out today in our part of the, our part of the beautiful Commonwealth. Uh, and you embody that. You and your team embody that in your accessibility to us here in Western Massachusetts. We talk a lot about regional equity. Uh, and today is one giant leap toward uh, greater regional equity for Western Massachusetts. So I'm happy to be here and celebrate with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Senator. If I could, I'd like to ask uh, Representative Sabadosa to say a few words. Good morning. I am so delighted to be here this morning. And one of the things that the secretary talked about was how, the, how these awards are given for towns that have vision and that are able to explain why they're important for their community. 
and I have not stepped foot in the town of Hatfield where someone has not talked to me about this sewer extension <laughs> over the last year. So you have incredible vision and dedication and passion and you've seen this not only as, as helping one business but helping many and helping your town grow and generating revenue and generating community and that is why I am so thrilled. I was so thrilled when I got this news that you were getting this grant and there was nowhere else that I could possibly be this morning than here to celebrate that with you and I want to just emphasize that I I so appreciate when you thank the delegation but this was the town of Hatfield this was the people in this community that day in day out thought about how to make this grant better and how to make it a reality so it's your select board it's your town administrator it's really everyone here the volunteers in this town that make Hatfield a special place and that should be celebrating this win today so thank you for having me here to celebrate with you Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, when we were Christmas tree shopping back a few weeks ago, I guess I shouldn't have brought up the whole sewer thing to you. Uh, it was fine. All right, my, my, apolo my, my apologies. We ran into each other at an event, so uh, my, uh, my, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, you know, honestly, uh, I think I speak for the select board and the townspeople uh, when we talk about our delegation to to Boston. So while you, you gave us praise today, we'd like to thank both of you and everybody else who's, who's part of this process uh, for the town of Hatfield. So, so thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask one of our business partners, uh, Frank Stiebel, to say a few words. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. I don't know how much you know about Stiebel Eltron, so I was going to tell you a little bit about our company. So uh, we are a privately held uh, company. My brother and I uh, jointly own the company. And the headquarters is in Germany. We have about uh, 3,000 employees worldwide. And we have plants, <coughs> two plants in Germany, one plant in Thailand, one plant in Slovakia, and one plant in, in China. So we're really operating on a worldwide basis. And this, our operation here is uh, taking care of the North American market and South American market as well. So this is a very important location for us. And um, so I myself came, uh, I grew up in uh, Germany, of course, you can tell by my accent. Um, so I uh, came here in the 80s to study and ended up staying here in this wonderful area. And um, so we are mostly known for uh, tankless electric water heaters which is what we've been selling mostly in the United States so far. But in Europe, we're also really big into heat pumps uh, for water heating applications and space heating applications. And we're going to start to bring more products, uh, uh, those types of products, into the US. And we need more warehouse space for that. So this is uh, perfect uh, that we can now go ahead at some point and build an additional warehouse in that location on Route 5. So, um, so we're planning to continue to grow in this area and we're fully committed to Hatfield. And if you ever need a really good water heater, please give us a call. Uh, and Frank wasn't kidding about being worldwide. Uh, when we were out front before this event started, I mentioned to him that when we were in St. Martin last year and I went to do a little wash and laundry as my wife had asked me to do so. When, it, when I opened the cabinet, there was a Cebo Eltron uh, water system or heat, heat pump probably, heat, yep. Um, for, for, so you are everywhere, that was in St. Martin, so. <laughs> All right, um, and our, our last speaker today w uh, also is with Cebo Eltron. I'd like to introduce Erica Gies, uh, who is the um, real estate development side of the house, right? Okay, please welcome Erica. Thank you all. I'll be brief. Oh, this is new and on. <laughs> I'll be brief. Um, I've been, Frank and I have been working together since the late 90s, and when Frank was looking to expand, uh, he was originally in Holyoke, he started Stiebel Eltron, and when he was looking to expand, Hatfield came up and has instantly been a perfect fit. The town has been so welcoming and so supportive of everything 
that we've been trying to do together. And it's, it started at 15 West Street, 17 West Street. We expanded down there. Frank purchased the 73 acres that are in now this impact zone by the sewer system, um, in the sewer extension. And that's a huge parcel, which is zoned industrial and residential. So for us, having this now acknowledgement from the state and this grant really supports our vision for sustainable <coughs> development and growth because that's an old, that's an aquifer recharge area. The town well is right there. It's an old gravel pit. It's also part of the glacial till zone in the rise there. And then also the flat area is clay and wet. It would make no sense to do septic systems in a light industrial zone there. So for us, having this vote of confidence really allows us to expand our vision of sustainable development, restoring the original hydrology of the site, the aquifer, recharging that aquifer, and also meeting the economic needs for, for development and growth with our in industrial um, project, our warehouse, and then housing too. Our long-term plan is housing on the top. So we're in a great corridor, a great location. So this is a vote of confidence from the state, and we have uh, this partnership that we've had with the town. We're so excited to continue this. It's been really a, a pleasure working with everyone in the town, and we really appreciate it. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Erica, and I'd like to thank all of our, our guest speakers today and thank everybody for being here. Uh, this actually concludes the, the formal part of the uh, award ceremony. I'd like to thank um, Secretary Keneally one more time uh, and the MassWorks team for, for all they've done for Hatfield. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Safe travels back to wherever you came from. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Um, this is this continuation of the select board meeting from December 17, 2019. Uh, we have just um, met with Secretary Keneally and received a MassWorks grant, which will be spoken about just a little bit. Uh, so at this point, we're getting to some of our agenda items. So um, under announcements, does anybody have anything? No, I just want to say, th Brian, you did a great job in seeing the event. I, I think uh, you gave a really nice presentation. Thank you. Everybody. It was okay. very, Thanks, very Ed. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And thank, and thank you guys for your efforts on this as well. I would just remind people that they can still buy candles uh, or sponsor candles for the birthday cake. They're $25 a piece. You can get them here at the town hall. There's different people from the 350th committee, myself, uh, who, who's selling them. And we try to be at some events. We may be at a boys' basketball game, a girls' basketball game coming up. So, Do you anticipate having those or having any left at the gala? Or do you think, to, uh, to, I mean, perhaps, have you guys gotten to that point? It depends. Well, I'm sure there'll be some left where people okay. could sponsor I, I just them. Didn't they, know. they may be, the, yeah. Okay. But don't count on it. Your people are better off to try it. Because you're limiting the number, right? Actually, It's only, well, three, we'll only I mean, you're sell doing 350, for, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. okay. right. And right. they're selling pretty, pretty well. Okay. They make great stocking stuffers, I heard. Is that true? Or well, it's I, nice. Your name will <laughs> appear on a sign as being a, you know, part of mm -hmm. this and, Helping to sponsor the cake and the 350th, then it'll be put out there. Are we selling them at the Luminarium at I, night? I, I'm Luminarium? not sure about. I'm not sure about Might that. Might be an opportunity yeah. there as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There could be a logistic issue, though. I mean, yeah. you, you certainly would have people there. I, you know, it's a matter of would you have yeah. a booth I, or a table or yeah, some sort of can, way of. We can you know. talk about that, but yeah, we're. Wherever there's people gathered, we'd like to think about selling them, but we, we don't have sense. specific plans to be at Luminarium, but it's possible. Okay. Are you Speaking volunteering, Michael? <laughs> yeah. well, I'll, I'll have my tickets with me, so I mean, if people want to. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, we're going to light a cake that the, night. It is going to be lit so that night. it would be a great time to yeah. say, hey, anyone wants yep. to sponsor one of these candles? Thank you. Yeah. Speaking of Luminarium. Saturday. Oh, and that's right. And speaking of Luminarium, we should... As a um, reminder announced to everybody, it is this Saturday, Saturday. night. Yes. This Saturday. Saturday night. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ceremony starts at 6.30? Six, six, I think 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. I think the official, yes, I, I believe officially it's at 6. People usually start congregating, mm -hmm. you know. And it will five, include the, the initial lighting of the yeah. birthday cake, which would the be really exciting. The library has a children's story hour at 5 p.m. And, and then um, the, the church has the handbells at 7, seven. so I think we're yes.
Yes, yep. squeeze between that. Mm -hmm. Great, and the weather looks uh, chilly but dry yes. so at this point, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anybody have any other announcements to make? Marlene, did you? Uh, I do. Thank you. Uh, we received notification this morning from the Department of Revenue. Uh, tax rate has been approved at uh, $13.53. So just, just received the notification. <laughs> so that's Thank great. You. So the tax rate's been set. That's the good news. The bad news is you'll be seeing your tax bills um, <laughs> uh, in rel relatively, about a week and a half. <laughs> rel relatively soon. Merry Christmas and Happy yeah. New Year. <laughs> um, uh, but, but kidding aside, uh, this is an important step yes, um, yes. for the town and, and the revenue stream for the town. So uh, thank you to Marlene and our financial team, Sharon and Jenny uh, and others, for uh, sticking with this and getting this done. For, and for what it's worth, it's, uh, um, it's 13 Thirteen fifty three, which is a little bit or lower than last it, year's tax. Last year was thirteen eighty nine. So thirty six cents. So thank, thank you. All right. Um, are there any other announcements? No. Okay. Uh, I have one I'd like to make that I've been um, stating before our public meetings, which is. Um, the Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings and all other public meetings of the town of Hatfield. All regular. Pardon me. All regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the town of Hatfield shall be open to the public and shall conform to the open meeting law. The executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. So, thank you. All right, is there anybody, the, uh, yeah, those are for you, Diana. Is there anybody here for public forum? Mr. Keir? Um, just, uh, I've been thinking recently, there was a, an article on the town meeting warrant last spring that never materialized after a, a government, town government committee appointed by the Select Board had looked into the possibility of rearranging the select board to five people. There was differing opinions from different lawyers as to whether the, the procedure was correct or incorrect, and it's kind of just sort of sitting out there now, and I'm hoping that that doesn't just get forgotten about, that at some point that gets brought up, maybe even considered as another town meeting uh, warrant article this coming spring, um, or, but just want to keep you guys reminding that, that that work got done and that there should be some sort of a um, consideration by, this, by the full, by the town as to whether or not that is something that we should be considering or not. So just a reminder, uh, having been part of that process and put a lot of time, effort, and energy into it, I don't want it to just kind of go by the wayside, so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep. Is there anybody else here for public comment? Okay. Um, uh, the approval, do we have the minute? Yes, so approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the following minutes. Board of Selectman Executive Session 723-2019, Board of Selectman Meeting 723-2019, Board of Selectman Meeting 822-2019, and Board of Selectman Meeting November 25th, 2019. Okay, Second. you've heard a motion uh, and it's been seconded. Does anybody have any uh, questions or changes or comments regarding any of those four separate sets of minutes? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, posted business uh, regarding the finance director position. So uh, before Marlene. Did we skip one? Oh, we skipped them? I'm sorry. The annual license renewals. Sorry. Just need a vote of the board to approve the license renewals presented. which is a yearly um a yearly process for mm -hmm. us do we do them individually or just as as presented okay. yes. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve um annual liquor licenses class one two and three auto dealer licenses entertainment licenses and automatic amusement licenses as presented i'll second that okay so the motion's been made and seconded to approve the licenses as presented is there any discussion no. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. all right thank you all right, getting back in order. Um, so uh, next agenda item is to talk about the finance 
um, mm -hmm. director position that uh, the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee had um, had spoken about and advertised for. Um, there was a candidate, we did speak about it at our last meeting, there was a candidate who had applied and had been interviewed, um, but declined the position. So, uh, and that would have been an individual who would have been the finance director slash town accountant um, on a full-time basis. Mm -hmm. So, obviously the accounting services and uh, help us pr uh, look to the future as different ways from a finance perspective and, and, and work with our budgeting process and things like that. So uh, I don't want to say we're back to the drawing board, but we had to re-advertise. Um, and so far we've had two, and Marlene, I don't want to steal your thunder. So far we've had two um, businesses, mm -hmm. uh, um, or two entities, not individuals, but, uh, but um, businesses um, express an interest in becoming the, um, the Hatfield accounting slash finance uh, company to, to assist us moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, did, is this something you wanted to expand upon? I just, or? you know, uh, you representing the Board of Selectmen, did. Sharon representing the Treasurer Collector's Office, myself and members of the Finance Committee have met with representatives from Lawrence and Heath and uh, Pioneer Valley Planning, uh, their regional, municipal regional services program provides accounting services. So we have met with, with those individuals and um, we're going to ask them to come back. Right. Um, so I'm in the process of, of scheduling those. Um, so we may, we don't anticipate having a finance uh, director accountant uh, as of January 1st. However, we will yeah. continue the AP process with uh, an accounting person from Pioneer Valley, at Pioneer Valley, uh, Bay State Municipal Accounting Group. She's going out on her own. We need to yeah, have continue. somebody in place to do that anyway. Um, so that will work out. Um, we will continue to, Treasurer's Office will continue to do what they need to do. And as soon as we have somebody in place, um, you know, we'll, we'll begin reconciliation right. for, for 20. We may be, we're looking at closing out 19. But I think the, the point is, though, that we um, are going to ask those individuals back. back. Yes. So, thank you. Um, just to, um, to jump on that a little bit. So, uh, as people may or may not recall, the, the current accounting service, Bay State Municipal Accounting, is um, going out of business uh, as of the end of this year, in two weeks. December 31st, we've been trying for, for quite some time to, to fill that void that we know is coming as of January 1st. Um, to Marlene's point, we have somebody in place ready to do the daily type of accounting services that are necessary. And we are asking both the um, companies who we dealt, who we interviewed with, which was more of a, I would say we interviewed kind of at the high, higher, higher level. level. So uh, Melanson Heath and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission both have strong backgrounds in accounting services. Um, so we could hit the ground running with, I, with either of them. But we, we, the interview process that we've gone through thus far has been at the, the managerial level of those companies and not necessarily with the, uh, the hands-on people that we would necessarily be dealing with. And that's who we want to interview next. Right. I will say this, I personally, and I can't speak for other folks who were part of the interview process. Um, I don't believe we could go wrong with either one. I agree. And, and for what it's worth, both of them said about the other, you can't go wrong with them. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, it was just kind of a good, um, it, it was a good process. I, I wish it was moving along. You know, it, it, this time of year, you've got vacations with people um, traveling. Uh, but where Marlene's already reached out to both to say we, we need to get you guys back in here at the, at the local level and, and you know have some more interviews uh, or another interview with each of them mm -hmm. before we make a decision to bring it for before the Board of Selectmen and the, and the entire Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, but so things are moving along. Um, you know we got the tax rate today. We, we've got somebody lined up to do the day-to-day -day accounting and, and uh, hope to have in the next just the next couple weeks hopefully a few weeks maybe uh, somebody on board from an actual uh, accounting firm, accounting service, to, to be the, uh, the high-level accounting services that we ultimately are going to need as we move into 2020, mm -hmm. uh, calendar year 2020.
Do you guys have any questions or no, that's of, of either of us? Mike? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, two questions. Um, one is uh, Marlene is saying that Bay State or a principal of Bay State who is going on her own mm -hmm. the payables for a while. That's fine. How about on the other side, the cash side, the cash receipts, the receivables, and just the other general accounting transactions that have to be taking place and being made by an accountant? Right. The treasurer's How, office yeah. will be doing their own reconciliation. Right. Once we have an accountant on, on staff, right. we will be okay. playing catch up. I can assure you the treasurer's office is up to speed. Yeah, I'm not, no. They I'm are. Not, I'm just saying, but, but the, the entries that she makes have mm -hmm. to be reconciled. That's and right. Have yep. to they do. We know, yeah. system. So, um, we know that. Yeah, no yep. reflection whatsoever on Sharon. I know yeah. she's doing a great job. Yeah. But, you know, what she right. does has to be put into our system. And both companies that we've interviewed, they understand they have those that. Servers. They know yes. that. Yeah. And do you have any idea the, the state of our financial recording system as of December 30th, what it will be? Are you getting any input from Bay State, Justin, at this point, in terms of how he is going to leave us? What What is the state of right. our, so, where is he at with fiscal 19? Right. Where is he at with and fiscal I have, 20? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I've asked him to provide that update yes. he, um, in the next because we've week. Because we got all of that to yeah. continue. Yeah. We, to we, we understand. Yeah. I've asked so, for three things. Where he expects to leave fiscal year 19, yeah. status of fiscal year 20, and yeah. his, his transition plan. Transition, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, DPW director report, water sewer infrastructure project on Route 5. Well, today we, uh, as you well know, that we have uh, received the $2 million grant from the Mass Works Project for the Route 5 corridor for the sewer and water improvements. Uh, we've been knocking on that door for many years, yeah. and we finally were awarded the $2 million. So we are moving forward as we speak. Uh, Comprehensive Environmental has already been out there surveying. So the final design is the next step in the plan and get it out to bid. Mm -hmm. So I know that you probably have something to say about the award, so. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Genovese. I think I've said enough today, uh, <laughs> if, if anybody happens to see the other part of this. Um, kidding aside, uh, this truly was a team effort, and, and I already spoke to this when Secretary Keneally was here um, giving us you know, uh, approving the grant or making it official. We've actually known about this, by the way, for a couple of months, but there was uh, somewhat of a gag order <laughs> that they didn't want us to, to mention it to anybody uh, as excited as we were because they, you know, they wanted to come and make the presentation, and we appreciate that, having the secretary come from Boston and our local legislators, um, uh, Lindy Sabadosa and Joe Comerford were here. Um, so we can now go ahead and do the design and get, yes. get it out to bed. Yep. It, now's a good time to bid in, in the winter time, right? So, once the design, like, right? yeah. Right. Yeah. Phil, is the idea to look at construction for construct the next construction season? Uh, it all depends on where we go. Uh, we got the main focus right now is to the final design. design and right. Right. Part of that design has to be. We're going to be sending out a letter, comprehensive as drawing, drafting a letter to send out to all the residents and businesses because we really want to get into the structures or the residents or the businesses to see the elevations that we can do because we don't want to do a grinder pump system. What we want to do is a gravity fed system for that corridor. So once he drafts a letter and we're going to mail it out to all the residents, we're going to set up two times during the day and at night to go in individual houses individual businesses and see where the elevations what we can achieve by doing the gravity and that is going to drive how deep we have to go with the pipe which would drive the final cost the so, final cost so we'll yeah. see uh, so but, but with that being said i mean i think that's the original plan that we looked at of a gravity fed system so yes. i don't think much is going to change there. right that's what was in our application yeah. Uh, when I was reviewing it last night, so I had an idea what I was talking about earlier today. Uh, it, the, and the, 
the um, the pro not the program the the proposal as a whole, it, you know, is is three and a half million, three point six million dollars, quite frankly. So just so residents understand that. So, but we have over half the money now, um, and th this is a huge benefit to that corridor, not only for business but for residents. If you remember last spring or last fall, maybe now at this point, this room was packed with, with the people that live along Route 5 that are looking forward to the opportunity to be able to get onto the uh, wastewater uh, system mm -hmm. should they either need to or should they want to. Um, so while uh, this certainly is gonna help with business growth, which of course helps with our tax base, it's also gonna help the residents who wanna um, take part in, in that program as well. But I think to Phil's point, we're gonna need some uh, more final numbers or closer to final numbers uh, because we will be coming to the townspeople um, you know, to, to finish that, that funding off. And, and it, it's a little early in the process to, to know how we're, how we're gonna do it, what we're gonna ask for, and, and how we'll pay for it. But, it, you know, uh, but I, I didn't want anyone thinking that uh, quite honestly, that the two million was taking care of everything. That that's fifty-five percent or whatever the math is. So, I mean, we anticipate that you know there will be an article at town meeting. Right. This, this annual town meeting. Yeah, yeah. But we've got to pull the pieces together right. because we just as soon go to town meeting once with a figure. Right. Um, that's right. We we have a tendency to unfortunately go back to town meeting a couple different times because things change, and I get that. Right. But that's why we need to do our due diligence before May, um, as best we can. So we have an exact figure, how we're going to pay for it, you know, what's the funding source and the payback and all those types of things. And, and we, will, we will get that information, obviously. That's our role and responsibility. But, you, know. you know, and as a DPW director with a capital plan moving forward, and you know the process had to be in by December 1st. So we did plug that number of 3.6 into, right. you know, what the $2 million grant. Right. Yep. awarded. So. And, 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 and is this looking at like a debt exclusion for that? Uh, 1.6, which would have to go onto the ballot in, in May as well. It, it, it's possible, David. We we haven't had the conversation no, I yet. Um, yeah, I but but yeah, it, it, it could be a couple. Yeah. And, and if that is the case, then we need to get a question to the town clerk. Right. Um, yes. Sometime in right. April. Because you'd have a two-headed debt exclusion approved at the ballot box as well as at town meeting, correct? Correct. Right. If it, if it goes that route, yes, you need both. Yes. Yep. Okay. So just getting back yes, to sorry. some conversations on Route 5, which I've already had, it's not only the, the, the uh, award of the grant or what's going to happen down there, but the construction of that project. I mean, there's businesses, you know, that are thinking of opening a deli, of doing this during that construction time, the restaurants, because as you know, you know, it's going to probably be a year's project down there under the mass jurisdiction, highway jurisdiction of it. So people are pretty excited that, you know, we're gonna get revenue out of this project as oh, well. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's just a win-win situation. It, there's the obvious benefit of, you know, in extending the water and right. sewer line and what that means for businesses. We know for a fact that there's a very good business there mm -hmm. that will expand, expand the tax base. It'll also bring some extra jobs into town. But then there's, um, you know, smaller benefits that are still just as important. There'll be better fire protection um, in that end of town. Getting people off of their septic systems there, that's an aquifer recharge area. So disabling those septic um, systems along that whole corridor is a huge win. Um, so there's a lot of um, really good benefits to this project. So hopefully it'll be something yeah. townspeople, you know, really see the, the benefit. The value of it is, yeah. 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 For sure. Thank you. Did you have anything else to say on that? Ed, did you have any questions? Or no, no, I'm just no. saying down the road we're going to have to have another conversation on how to fund it because yeah. there are a couple options that we could look at that need discussion. Yep. That's all. And we're getting to that time of year, right? It's December now, so right after the first of the year is usually when Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, all the department heads start. Uh, putting things out there to see what makes sense and in, in, in the different fund, funding sources. All right. Quick question for Phil, if I could. That's um, three. Yes. Uh, one question. Uh, when we do the design of this, will we take at all into consideration uh, the impact on the sewage treatment plant 
And, yes, and that, that has to be figured into the equation. Mm -hmm. We're only at 32% okay. capacity, so yep. Yep. What, they're gonna, what they're going to generate off of a mile of pipe <coughs> isn't going right. to be all that much. Yep. That is a conversation, Mike, that we've, we've had along this whole process and with the MassWorks people as well, actually, the, the grant folks. Okay, thanks, Phil. Um, Marlene, the town administrator report. Let's see, what do I have? <laughs> uh, Fire Chief Screening Committee, unfortunately received a resignation. Yep. Uh, Jeff Boyle is unable to, um, to serve on the committee. You have in front of you his uh, letter of resignation, <coughs> and I would ask the board to accept his resignation. I'll make a motion to accept his resignation from the Fire Chief Screening Committee. That. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, to accept the resignation of uh, Marcus Jeff Boyle from the screening, from the fire, excuse me, fire chief screening, screening committee. committee. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That is with regret. It is, yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. And I had thought we might have an appointment um, to bring forward to the board um, for to fill that vacancy. Um, the person has um, changed their mind, and I'm so I'm still seeking interest in so we have four members now we we'd be four. looking to fill jeff slot which would be the fifth person right. on the i was um, going to suggest maybe a representative from the finance committee previous searches we've had a representative from the finance committee although jeff was uh, a citizen at large so we have another citizen at large on that committee right so well i, I mean I'd we can certainly out put there. out right. today that we're looking for someone if mm -hmm. they want to be part of this Fire Chief Search Committee, but I think in the meantime, it might be a good idea to run it by the Finance Committee, see if there's someone from that group that wants to fill it. I think we need to get moving. Moving, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Uh, Excuse me, Marlene. I think we had this discussion, and you probably already got this in mind. You have to change your charter first <coughs> before you put someone from the Finance Committee on there. Oh, right, right, that's okay. right. Yes, we'd have to update the charter, revise the charter. The charter, this charter for this group says appoint, appoint a five member committee. Doesn't, and because of the bylaw that doesn't allow a finance committee member to, to serve on any other committee oh, with the exception of a vote. Specifically right. requires a member of the finance. Right. So if somebody from the finance committee Well, does, maybe there'll be somebody from the community at Yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lydia. All right. All right. Um, um, HR policy review. Uh, okay. And just one other regarding the fire. Okay. Mike, I see your hand, and I think I read something in the beginning. I'm not trying to be rude. We've got to move on. We've got to move on. Marlene. The fire chief employment posting. Yes. Uh, so there's just been some uh, requests for clarification. Yep. And um, I know I had passed along to the members of the Board of Selectmen that I had uh, consulted or, or discussed with a uh, retired fire chief at the Massachusetts Fire Chiefs Association. Yeah. Uh, in your packet, you have a updated or revised posting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to re-advertise if the board uh, agrees with, with those changes. Yep. Do you have, and does anybody have any comments or have you seen this no, before? If, or? if this is what we should do, then let's re-advertise. Right with the new changes. Diane, you did ask me a question about the uh, paramedic uh, certification requirement. Right. And currently, the way this reads, that that is, uh, at a minimum, a requirement. Right. OK. I'm, I'm fine with the revisions to this. OK. OK. Hey, for people to you know, so um, basically, we we didn't redo the whole process. It, it, it was kind of um, to make it more, what's, what's a good word? Um, so we made some changes where it would allow potential chiefs to be looking to achieve certain certifications and certain licensures. Um, whereas I think in the beginning, uh, it might have been a little too stringent, mm. um, especially for the salary range we offer. So. Correct. So I think this was sort of a step back 
Mm -hmm. um, Marlene spoke to the retired chief. Um, you know, another set of eyes on this. A uh, little somebody with experience and a background in it. We, you know, made made some changes to minimum requirements. Um, how many years of service you need to have in an administrative role? Mm -hmm. um, the distance you you live from town. You know, you know um, we extended that a little bit, and then. Um, you know, re, uh, getting permanent residency in town. We extended the amount of time for somebody to fulfill that. You know, I, I think we, we were shooting high and, and con condensing a lot of what we, I guess, ultimately would like, but, but we also have to be realists and, and, yes. and realize that, you know, we're dealing with people com potentially mm -hmm. coming from somewhere else. They have, need time to move. They've got to find housing. Um, they might be in the midst of working mm -hmm. towards certain things. So yeah. um, that's really all the only changes that we made. So um, do you, you need a motion, I'm guessing, to change To this? accept To these accept changes. these with changes? Mm -hmm. um, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, changes to the job posting for the fire chief position as presented. I'll second it. Okay, so the motion's made and seconded. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now you can repost that and... I will. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And HR policy review, Marlene? Update? Uh, so... Oh, oh, this one. We're, recirc we're, we're, still, we're circling back you. at, yeah, <laughs> the drug-free workplace. And town council has reviewed yep. uh, the policy and made some just minor minor edits and then also he had uh, let's see if we go to the bottom of uh, page one yep and he inserted uh, some additional language uh, second sentence including convictions relating to alcohol or marijuana such as driving a town vehicle or dr driving during the work day while intoxicated um, and who admits to facts mm -hmm. so the red language yep. in red um, those also include some of the changes that i had already made so that um, would cover driving a town vehicle or driving their own vehicle while on work time while intoxicated is that how i read that in under driving. being during the work day it's like it's both so it would be both. Whether you're Dri in the Right, or your you're own vehicle. If you're on the clock. Right. Whether that's you're what I, yeah. I would just want to I mean, that's time. how I interpret it. On right, town not, time. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Driving during the work day. Yeah. yeah. So on the, at the top of the second page, yeah. you can see town council has pretty much struck most of that section. Um, and so where it continues to successfully complete a drug abuse or similar program, that becomes part of five. Yeah, yep. it, it, yeah, he struck it there, but five, it's, it's yes. been inserted elsewhere, Where, basic, yes. basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. If that policy is acceptable to the board, I would ask the board to approve those changes. Do anybody have an uh, have any comments or questions, or want to make a motion and we'll second it and then have discussion, or how? A second. Or bring it back for a, another um, look. Um, there you go. Make I sure we're all good. comfortable with it. Yeah, um, I just it, I just think it's worded a little funny. The driving during the work day. I guess it should be well. I mean, because you could. It doesn't really. It, it doesn't say like on the te while you're actually. Working. I mean, during the work day. I guess. I mean. I, it's, I is I do you at, see where I'm going? Like, I what do. if you have the day off? It's during a work day. So, oh, I I, I understand. So, what you're so here's it's, so as I the, as I look at this again, Diana, um, such as driving a town vehicle or, while intoxicated. Yeah. That's whether you're on the clock or off the clock. That's being in a town vehicle. Mm -hmm. Then there's the or driving during the work day while intoxicated. To me, that means during, not while in, you're, not in a work vehicle, but, but while you're working. Well, I think that's, I think work day implies that. Okay. As long I mean, as, that's how I. Yeah, I just, it's a little. Because it doesn't say yeah. during the day. It says work day. Work day, yeah. Okay. And then I'm fine with it. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Marvin. So I'm not driving trying to. a town vehicle. So the town vehicle is 24 7. During during the work so you day. could be in a town vehicle or you may be in your own vehicle during well, regular working. As long as that, that's what your interpretation but, is. That but it's if well you're in a town vehicle on a Saturday night, 
you're not, but you're on not the necessarily clock. on but, the but, clock. But but you're 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 susceptible or to this policy. But why would you be in a town vehicle then? I don't. You're not you on the shouldn't. Clock. You shouldn't be. I yeah. I understand that. But if we're trying to clear, if we're trying to clarify this, it's yeah. to al conviction relating such as driving a town vehicle. Period. Or driving during the workday while intoxicated. You know, you know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, I driving hate to use our hate vehicle. to use our DPW director as an example, but he's sitting there. So if Phil on a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. um, you know, gets pulled over for drunken driving, and he shouldn't be, but if he's in the Hatfield vehicle, vehicle. he's mm -hmm. not on work. He's not at Correct. work, but he's in a town vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. that's that's what this covers. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Town vehicle it doesn't the, mean you're on the clock. It just means you're in a town vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, I, that's, that's how I'm interpreting way, yes. this. Uh, is, is, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how you guys are saying it. Yep, to just drive okay. a town vehicle. All right. Yeah, or driving during the day. Correct. It's, or driving it's, during it's like either the or. Day. You're yes. in a town vehicle or you're driving during the work day in a non-town vehicle. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So we, we all good with, mm -hmm. with that? All right. So is there a, uh, was there anything else on this policy? No, no I was, no. I'm good. I'll make a motion that we um, accept that policy as revised. Uh, motion's been section made. Section of the policy. Mo okay. Section 23 as revised. There's been a motion made there's an, okay. and a second by Ed. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unanticipated new business, Marlene? That you, we need to. Did I miss something again? Uh, Jeez, town I hall keep skipping over. Update. Sorry. Is there a town hall renovation update? Nice uh, job, so by the way, uh, if I could. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please. Thank you for everybody today, uh, the police department, the DPW, everybody in town hall for uh, making access to the building mm -hmm. on behalf of safe, Secretary Kennelly nice and his access. team yeah. and Channel 22 uh, and everybody else who was here and all our state representatives. So thank you guys, seriously, appreciate it. Okay, sorry, I meant to, I meant to start with that. Marlene, yes. Well, town hall just, renovation. And, and that was part of why I said that was because everything looks good considering yeah. we're in the midst well, of construction. Well, and consider, here. yeah, we're under construction uh, yeah. and, you know, our the con GC was asked if they could cease operations yep. during, you know, the, the morning hours while we had this event. Uh, so we continue to have our cons weekly construction meetings and um, they have been very busy. Um, they're in the process uh, of finishing up with the elevator shaft, is that correct, Ed? Yes. And um, I noticed they did pour the cement for the ramp. Yes. Yeah, I wasn't sure that they were going to be able to do that. And the big gate's gone out front, for, we're covering the holes filled in. Yes. So, uh, do we need to do something for speaking of luminarium and? Town hall construction. Do we need to cordon that off somehow so people don't start walking and? At our 350th well, meeting this week, I'm sorry, Steve, uh, Chief mm -hmm. Gone attended our meeting yep. and we talked about he's got a plan. Okay, yes. all right. We for, talked about it at the um, department head so meeting. Fine. Yep. All right. I just wanted to. Yeah, you know. he's 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 got a plan to make sure that it's safe and. Okay. everything yeah. for everybody attending. We don't want Santa getting hurt that. before Christmas. We appreciate uh, him yep. being attentive to that. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Marty. Yeah. No, that's well. okay. That's all right. Um, so they're doing the shaft and they did the ramp. They're finishing so. up with the shaft. Um, and, oh, yes. Yes, Lydia. Um, in connection with the ramp and I'll get Phil on on to this, early on I was hopeful that that ramp would be finished by the end of February or the last week in February. Election. Because the presidential primary is March 3rd. There is a week, or actually in our town, there will be three days of early voting the week prior to the primary. Um, so I need to have handicap access. And although we've got a temporary ramp out back, mm -hmm. the door, we have an issue with the door. So I'm watching this ramp very carefully, hoping <laughs> it might be finished by then. But if not, there's a possibility that voting will be in the um, safety complex room across the parking lot um, for early voting and the presidential primary. So stay tuned. Um, and depending on you know, if I can get some good evidence that that ramp will be finished, we'll vote here where we usually do, but there is a possibility 
that voting may be across the parking lot for the primary. Um, I'm expecting that's the only election that's going to be affected, um, if, if at all. So at, just, at this point, we're, we are pretty certain that the, the new ramp will not be, not be, it's not be completed. Ready, so yeah. So yeah. All right. So I just wanted to kind of get that sure. out there already, because I'm going to have to do a lot of advertising. The, yeah. The, the good news, yeah. if, if there is any, if it's out back, people are already here. I, you know, right. I, it's, yeah. it's not like a whole another section, part of town or something. Exactly. So, uh, but we'll we'll keep getting the word. Yes, know, understood. They put things yep. on their website, you know, for people uh, just to Google. Where do you vote in Hatfield? Well, you know, um, when's your first early voting start? Do you know off the top of your head? And end of February, you said? Yeah, it's like the. I don't want to I, I, on only, I only ask because so let's, at a certain point, let's just pull. March 3rd is on a Tuesday. Yeah. So the week before that, it'd be Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday would be early voting because you're required to do it during I, your normal business hours. Right. You know, Lydia, I personally, if, if we're all pretty certain it's not going to be ready, let's just assume it's not yeah. and start mm -hmm. as of January yeah. 1st. It's going to yeah. be, well, you were talking let's about make the arrangements. Just yeah. Forward, so I'm like, oh, did something, you know. And it's winter. Yeah. So who yeah. knows? Right. So I, why don't we just, for all the things you have to do with yeah. the state, if you guys, pretty, I mean. A pretty good setup out there. So, so yeah, and, they, and there's yeah, plenty of the easy. parking lot, and we'll just have yeah, town right. employees park elsewhere that they hope, you know, in front or, yeah. or whatever, yeah. so that yeah. the voters can. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, probably, it's up to you. It's no, your no, call, but, but yeah, I would. I think that's probably where I we're going. I would just do it. Then we don't have to worry about. Making a change days. down the road. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So we need, someone's just going to need to coordinate that with the. You yeah, know, fire well, and police yeah, and we'll, okay. We are. I already started. Okay. Out the feelers. I can't imagine it's an issue. But no, he you know. he's been very cooperative. Yeah. It's it's outside of his. He'll already, I think, be gone mm -hmm. unless there's will any be. kind of extension. So. But we've got to get the commitment ahead of time. Yes. So he'll still be here. Right. And, yeah. And, and hopefully he'll might. put in a good word for me with yeah. the new fire chief. So. No, just you know. All right. Was there anything else regarding, Ed, did you have anything you wanted to say about the renovations no, that I'm weren't not. spoken about yet? We have a schedule. The schedule states end of the month for the ramp, but again, weather dependent. So. Mm. What but month does it say that? Plan. Is it for February, the end of February? No, the end of this month. Oh, the end of December? According to the schedule update that we oh. received, but it's still The 17th weather, and it was poured yesterday. So weather the, dependent. Yeah, yeah, so. It why chance it? Yeah. yeah, you know, Lydia, I, I think you're safe just going back, out back. Yeah, well, because, because it's not only going to be the ramp, I mean, they're going to just keep moving ahead. So things you know, with us, sprinkler contractors are going to be in this building as well. Might, right. Yeah, okay. All right. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and no offense to the election, but you know, if we can have it elsewhere and it keeps everybody out of here, to Phil's point, we don't know what stage they might be at oh, doing something yeah. else, which maybe they need to be in this room. You know, who knows? Need a so. More That's all right. Well, and it also gives a lot more time to let residents yeah. know right. that it'll be in this different location. Yeah. Put it in the tax bill. You need a vote. Huh? Put it in the tax bill. You need a vote. Oh, there you and insert. Yeah. In in so what else is going? Just yeah, well. Yeah. It, yeah. Perfect. That's That's yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'll make I'll make a motion that the town clerk insert uh, in the next tax bill that's released that the voting. For the due to, construction. due to construction, the voting will be uh, in the emergency complex behind us. And, and, and they need a vote to actually insert something into the envelope. Is that the deal? For the primaries. For the primaries. For the primaries. So yeah. I made the motion. Is there a I'll second? second uh, any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Did that give you guys time to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you okay. What else? <laughs> Anything? That's all I have. No, the last thing on renovation is going to come fast is they presented us on areas of that are not going to be touched that may require maintenance. So our discussion from previous of figuring out oh. what we're going to do before people move back oh, in yeah, upstairs yeah. and downstairs, that's going to be coming up quicker than mm -hmm. we realize. I'm okay. Just, so. Yep. All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. actually, I do have one thing. Yes. I'd just like to put out there, um, and, and I actually should have brought it up at the department head meeting to let departments, uh, department heads know. Colonial Power Group was here a week and a half, two weeks ago. Yes, And thank you. the letter uh, from Dine Energy, Din yep. Energy, has been mailed out to all residents 
who are eligible. That means if you are on basic service, you are eligible to participate in the electric aggregate program. Right. And um, there has been some questions and uncertainty about whether this is a legitimate yes. letter that they've received. Mm -hmm. It is. And if they have questions, they can contact my office or the number at number Colonial the, Power as right. well. So what Marlene's referencing, um, I, I did receive it actually. So this is about your Eversource electricity bill. Eversource will remain your, your excuse me, will remain your electric company. company. This is about the supplier down below uh, that provides Eversource, you know, however the process is set up. So <laughs> you're still an Eversource customer whether you opt in or, or, or not. But to Marlene's point, you are going to be transferred over to the new supplier unless you fill out the form that came in the mail and mail it back saying, I want everything to stay as it is today, which is a higher rate, rate. than the town negotiated on the residents and businesses' behalf. I've seen some things uh, on social media, and, and I understand the confusion, uh, but I, I, hopefully we just clarified it a little bit. Eversource remains as your, electric, your local electric company. It's all about who the energy they're, they're getting, who supplies the energy to them. And the town negotiated for a lesser rate than Eversource was offering. And that's what people are going to get unless they fill out the paperwork and mail it back that's to that right. company. Right. There, there was an announcement in the newspaper. Yes, there was. I There's saw it yesterday. information posted on the town's website. There was. I saw Facebook. that as well. Facebook. And we've also discussed it at a couple meetings, which I think we we're have. televised. And sometimes people don't listen or understand until it comes in the mail. And, yes. I, and I get it. Mm -hmm. and, and it also... Yeah. Thursday. Thursday, 1 to 4, right? They're supposed to Yes, they're, gonna, they're here. Informational sessions, two of them. This yes. week, right? That's right. Yeah, that's what, was in, that was what was in the paper. Uh, Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. I thought it was Wednesday. I better check it. I okay. thought it was Wednesday, but well, maybe it is Thursday. Yeah. Okay. This whole thing can be a little confusing to people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I understand people not really mm -hmm. understanding it, but it is a better rate, but still, you're still with Eversource. If anybody remembers when they had a landline phone in 1983 and Judge Green broke up the phone company. That's when I started my career. And that's when everybody got to choose their long distance carrier. And this is kind of similar, whereas it gets confusing. You still had Verizon or Bell Atlantic or whoever it was, but it was AT&T, it was MCI, it was Sprint. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that other part of this. And this is similar to that. So it, it, nothing's really changing other than we're just, uh, on behalf of the residents and businesses, as I said, we, 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 we negotiated a lesser rate. Um, that, your that's bill all is, this Your is. bill is still going to come from Eversource. That's right. If yes. there's a power mm -hmm. outage, you still call Eversource. Right. right. Yes. Eversource is still who They're maintains the, parent company, the grid and all right. of that. Mm -hmm. it's, Correct. It's mm -hmm. just, just who's just, giving them their yes, power. Exactly. Right. And okay. if you have a solar system, what will happen is that uh. that time of the year <laughs> where you're buying electricity, you'll be purchasing at the lower rate. Right. And that time when you're selling your electricity, you'll be back at your regular rate. So you, you, you don't lose either way. Spoken like somebody ha who, ha who knows all about that. Yeah, that I have. Mr. Jaworski. Yeah, my yeah. solar system. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Lydia? That was my one question. She had a good well, question. Because we have Re contracts with different people regarding oh, the solar. Right. Yep. So how were those contracts affected? But once you said the, you know, there were informational sessions, I wasn't yeah. going to bother you. Because I just go to the informational session. Yeah. Cool. What else? That is all I have. <laughs> Ed, it's been a did long you, day. Okay. Yeah, it has been a long day. <laughs> but we had a good day. We got the grant. It was a good day. A really Two million. Good day. Two million dollars. All right. Success. I guess we're wrapped up here. If anybody wants to. Uh, I make a motion, we adjourn. I'll second that. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Appreciate it.